When a child has a specific language impairment, it's natural for parents to ask what has caused it. Mothers often worry that they might have done something wrong, for instance, drinking the odd glass of alcohol while pregnant, or going back to work while the child was young. In fact, there's good research evidence that a persistent specific language impairment is very unlikely to be the result of anything that parents have done. Some of the strongest evidence comes from studies of twins growing up together in the same home. If we study children with language impairments who have a twin brother or sister, we often find cases where one member of the twin pair has specific language impairment and the other has no language difficulties at all. But this is only true if they are non-identical twins. For identical twins who are genetically the same, it's a very different story. If one member of the twin pair has a language impairment, the other twin usually has problems too. Evidence like this from twin studies shows that the main factor involved in causing specific language impairment appears to be genetic, rather than anything in the home environment. So can you have a genetic test for specific language impairment? The current answer is no, and this seems unlikely to change, even though we're learning a lot about genes and language. The reason is that for most children, language impairment isn't caused by a single genetic abnormality. There are a few families where a rare mutated gene has been linked to language impairment, but these are extremely uncommon. Now in everyone there are genes that take different forms, and different versions can have small effects on language learning. These are not rare mutations, but gene variants that are common in the population. The risk of language impairment seems to be the result of the combined effect of lots of different genes, each of which plays only a small part in affecting the risk of language impairment. So researchers are interested in tracking down these genes so they can understand better how they work to affect development, but they're not going to be useful for diagnosis. This is because their effects are very small and we wouldn't be able to predict which children would develop a language impairment on the basis of analysing only one gene. Sometimes people assume that if you find that genes are involved in language impairment, then we can't help children who are affected. That's simply not true. The key thing is to understand the specific nature of a child's difficulties so that we can develop ways of overcoming them. If you'd like to find out more about this topic, please see the associated slides and reference list on our rally website.